It's really a great uh, privilege and honor for me to be here today. I've had more than a decade's relationship with uh, the University of Toronto and the Rotman School. It's been a great relationship, one which has been greatly enriching to me, and I've learned a lot in the last few years, and I'm really privileged to be receiving this honorary doctorate here at the University of Toronto at the Rotman School. When I was thinking about what to talk about, I didn't want to talk about strategy or business or finance, and I thought of the fact that all of you are leaving the comfortable environment of your university and moving on to take up your jobs or to start companies. And in some sense, you're moving out of your comfort zone. And it struck me that it is, in fact, when I look back at my own life and the lives of other people who I'm, whom I've met, I think the ability to move out of your comfort zone is a very important attribute to be able to really move forward and be successful. This is all the more so in a world which is becoming increasingly more complicated, increasingly more ambiguous, and requires you to be able to do rapid changes in what you do. This thought struck me again yesterday when I was talking to a young person who was graduating today, and he asked me whether what was more difficult, starting a company in 30 years back or shifting from the private sector to the government, which I did two years ago, and in both cases, I was making a life change. But I realized that in some sense, the life change I made two years ago was in some sense at a personal level, a far more difficult decision for me. Because when I was part of the team that co-founded Infosys in 1981, I was just 26 years old. I didn't have any liabilities. I didn't have a family. I could take a huge amount of risk. So it was always possible for me to be part of a company and start it up. And you know, if, if it didn't work out, I could always go and take a job somewhere. So it was a relatively easy thing for me to move out of my comfort zone. But two years back, when I was in my job as the co-chairman of Infosys, and I was invited by the Indian government, by the prime minister, to lead this project, which I do call the Unique ID Authority of India, in some sense, that was a far more radical step for me, because I was giving up a very comfortable job in the private sector. I had a nice corner office overlooking a golf course. You know, I could have been doing this for the next 10 years and nobody would have known the difference. And it was, I gave up that for, for a job in the government. I had to change from a city which allowed Bangalore to go to Delhi to do this job. And I had to go from being at the top of a 100,000 person company to doing a startup all over again, but this time inside the government. So clearly it was a very big uh, change for me. And the risks were also higher because in some sense I had been successful in business and uh, the upside, wa upside was great, but the downside was that I would be unsuccessful in which case my whatever track record would, would be reflected in that fact. So it was really a high risk decision, but I think I was able to do it. And when I think back, I think one thing which I've found in many people whom I've interacted with is that the ability, therefore, to make those life changes or to make those changes and move out of their comfort zone. Now, wh why is it that people don't do it so often? I think there are many reasons. One is you can get very comfortable in what you're doing. You, you, you know, every decision which requires a change in your life is a certain amount of risk. Uh, you are, you know, there's often there is a loss of status when you move from one to another. For example, if you become an entrepreneur, you move from being uh, maybe a well-regarded corporate leader to doing a small company which nobody has heard of. It may mean a change in your lifestyle because you're used to a certain level of income. You will give up that income and start all over again you know, in a very in a bootstrapping kind of way, so it has implications on your lifestyle. It increases the ambiguity in your life because you, you are really taking whole new risks. So whenever we encounter these moments of change where we have to make big choices about our careers or about the way we think about the future or the way that we think about our businesses, being having the ability to get out of one's comfort zone and embrace change becomes a very, very important uh, ability. And I see this all the time. I, I get a lot of young people who come to me for mentoring. And invariably, I find it's this ability to embrace change, to take up something new, which distinguishes those who are able to lead and, and really succeed from those who are not able to do that. Very often, I find people are perplexed or they have lots of choices in front of them. And the very richness of choice 
in some sense creates a paralysis of decision making because they're never really able to commit to one of those choices and they end up not really moving from their equilibrium to a whole new equilibrium. So my earnest request to all of you is that as you become managers, as you become leaders, I'm sure all of you with the extraordinary background you have, the values you have inculcated, and the education that you received here are all set to go places. But if you really want to make that extra jump where you really reach the very top of your profession or your company or your desire for change in society, it's important to have the ability to be able to get out of your comfort zone, to be able to start anew at any point in your life, at whatever age it is, have the ability to go into a completely new environment where you have no background and then have the wits to figure out in that new environment what are the things that may, uh, make you successful and then figure that out and be successful. And if you can develop that ability to, to embrace change, to get out of your comfort zone, to embrace new things, to take risk, to recognize that, I mean, the worst thing that can happen is you will fail, not, nothing more than that. And recognizing that the worst thing that can happen is not particularly a big deal, and therefore you can go on to doing new things. I think that if you can just think about that in the way you think about your lives and your future and your career, I'm very, very sure that you will do even better than what you had planned. Thank you very much.